we have a field grasshopper and one of the very common species in South Wales. Um, I think the best way to tell it apart from others is the sharply angled markings on the pronotum. So the two lines that point in towards each other behind the head. Um, they also tend to have some red at the end of the abdomen. I'm sure you can see it on this individual. And they also have very long wings, so well past the end of the abdomen. Uh, most of the grasshoppers tend to have shorter wings than that. They're also um, quite furry underneath. Um, so we can remember that by saying it's a furry field grasshopper. Um, you can't see the fur on this one, so it's uh, not focused far enough. Um, their call is a single burst um, chirp noise. Um, can become um, more energetic if the sun is out, if there's a big group of them. They like drier habitats than the meadow grasshopper, which is the one they're most commonly confused with. Um, but you might get this one in your garden. They like rough land, um, sort of bare of soil, a bit like this one, which is on the sand dunes. So here we have two meadow grasshoppers, um, a female and a male. So this is quite a common species, you can probably find it in your garden, um, on road verges, bits of scrap land, etc. Um, these examples are both quite green, but there's a lot of colour variation. Um, you can actually get bright purple females sometimes in this species. So the best way to identify is the lines on the top of the thorax. So they're quite smooth, they're not too strongly kinked, but they're not entirely straight. But the main way really to identify the adults of this species is the wing length because it's the only um, grasshopper species in South Wales that has short wings. So this is a female with a very short wings, barely coming down halfway down her abdomen. And then the male has a longer wing length but still doesn't reach beyond the end of the abdomen. Um, the call is sort of a lazy chirping um, but quite prolonged. Um, I'll add a bit of footage of the song to the end of this video um, but yeah a good one to see um, in gardens etc quite an easy to identify one on the scale of grasshoppers so this is a lesser marsh grasshopper, another grasshopper that we get in South Wales. Um, we don't get the greater marsh, marsh grasshopper here. Um, the lines on the top of the head are straight, so that helps differentiate from field grasshopper, which have very indented lines. And the wing length is full, which helps differentiate from the meadow grasshopper, which has short wings. Um, you probably have to be in the right sort of habitat to find this. Um, they like damp grasslands, marsh land strangely enough. The call is quite discreet, it's uh, short energetic bursts of song um, which is easy to overlook and get lost in the other calls that you might hear at the same time. But yeah it's a nice little grasshopper, one to keep an eye out for if you're in the right sort of place. So this is a common green grasshopper. Um, despite the name, it's not one of the easiest to spot. Um, tends to prefer rougher habitat, a bit damper grassland. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to focus on it. So they're very feisty grasshoppers. Um, they've got a very insistent call, which you heard at the start of the video there. And um, they also have gently incurved um, lines on the top of the head which you can just about make out here so there's white lines traveling from the top of the wings to the head and more gently curved than other species um, it's quite a small one it tends to be green although there are color variations but there's never any red on it so if you find a grasshopper with red on it's definitely not one of these um, they will have long full-length wings unlike um, meadow grasshoppers and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on this but they often have a white mark on the wing 
um, as well, which helps to identify them. But yeah, you'll probably find this one due to its call, because it's a loud call, quite insistent, um, perhaps more noticeable than the other species. So this is a mottled grasshopper, unfortunately I couldn't find a live one, so we're taking a look at a specimen. Um, this species um, likes dry areas, so you might find it on sand dunes or um, colliery spoil sites it quite likes. Um, as the name suggests, it does have more markings than many grasshopper species, so quite mottled on the legs, etc. Um, but it comes in a lot of different colour variations, so it's not entirely reliable. Um, the key features for identification are the markings on the back of the pronotum uh, are more hourglass shaped, um, so they sort of curve inwards quite markedly, but they're not sharply pointed like uh, a field grasshopper. And um, the other major identification feature is the antennae, which are slightly thickened at the end uh, in females and then more noticeably clubbed at the end in males, so this is a female. So. It's quite subtle, I'm not sure if you'll be able to make it out, but it has slightly thickened antennae at the end. Um, but yeah, species you can find along the coastline and also um, up in colliery spoil sites in the valleys. Um, I don't have a recording of them calling, so I'm just going to play you um, the call from the iRecord Grasshoppers app, which is quite a useful app. So hopefully you can hear that. It's quite a short call that becomes more frequent and then will abruptly stop when they finish calling. So yeah, species to keep an eye out. Um, pretty much all around South Wales on the right sort of sites, but yeah, nice one to find. It's the only species in South Wales that has the clubbed or thickened antennae, so quite an easy one to identify. So here we have a long-winged conehead. So as the name suggests, they have long wings, and we have two species of conehead in South Wales, so um, the other is the short-winged conehead, um, which obviously has shorter wings. Um, you can also tell by the shape of the ovipositor, so the female egg-laying organ is much straighter on the long-winged conehead. Um, as you might be able to hear in the background, um, here's one that's calling. See the wings moving there. The call is um, very repetitive. <coughs> Some people liken it to a bicycle wheel going around. Um, it's quite high pitched, so not everyone can hear it, but you can normally uh, pick it up on a bat detector if you can't hear it with your own ears. So, this is just a bit of um, the call of a long winged cone head, which you may or may not be able to hear. But if you use a bat detector like this one, set low to 15 you'll immediately be able to hear them as it gets brought down to our level. So here we have a short-winged conehead, one of the two coneheads we get in South Wales. Um, obviously the wings are short so that's probably the easiest way to tell them apart from the long-winged conehead that we also get. Um, but the female's ovipositor, so the thing that sticks out at the back, um, is curved and a short winged, and it's straight on a long winged. Um, their call is very high pitched, um, some people say it sounds like a bicycle wheel going round, so very repetitive and long. Um, you might not be able to hear it if you're a bit older, but you can normally pick it up with a bat detector. So this is a dark bush cricket, um, our species of the month at Subrek for September. Um, it's not very easy to see. Um, this is a typical sort of view. Um, they sit very still on bramble or nettle, sort of dense vegetation, and um, call from there. So you'll more often just hear the call in the background. Um, you might be able to hear a, a long-winged conehead on this video. That's not the uh, 
the dark bush crickets call it. The dark bush cricket call is just a single chirp. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's quite a dull species. Very robust looking, like all the bush crickets. Um, practically non-existent wings. And this is a female, you can see the ovipositor at the back. And yeah, they've got lovely yellow tummies, um, which I don't think I can get an angle on, but other than that, they're quite dark, as the name suggests. Um, fairly common, you might get them in the garden. They like hedges and bushes and dense vegetation, so probably one that you're more likely to hear than see, but if you spend a bit of time looking in Bramble, you might be able to spot one. This is just a little bit of footage of the call of the dark bush cricket. Um, this is quite a common situation where you can hear lots of them around you but you can't see any. Here we have Rosal's bush cricket, quite a recent addition to the Welsh fauna. Um, first colonised quite a few years ago and is now starting to spread into Glamorgan propping up in a, a few extra places each year. Um, they can either be long-winged or short-winged. The long-winged variety tends to be the colonizers but they do come in short-winged version like this one here. Um, but the most distinctive thing about them is that yellow collar that they have, um, that sea mark that's bright yellow compared to the rest of the insect. And they have a very insistent call, sort of like a loud raspberry blowing sort of noise. I'll add a bit of footage of the call at the end of this. Um, this is a male because it doesn't have a ovipositor. Yeah, lovely addition to the Welsh fauna if you're in the right sort of location. So sort of a marshy fields, long grass. Um, that's the sort of place you'll find them. Not really a garden species, but one you might well find out in about. So what we can hear here and see is a Rosal's bush cricket very unmistakable call, very loud, and a sort of a continuous rasping noise. So this is a bogbush cricket, um, not a species you're likely to find in South Wales unless you're specifically hunting it out. Um, there's two sites in Glamorgan, one in Pencoid and one on the Gower. Um, this is from the Pencoid site. Um, like all the bush crickets, it's more robust looking than a grasshopper with a chunkier body, less slimline, less elegant. Um, they tend to walk rather than hop around quite a bit. Um, you can tell this from the other bush crickets um, by the colouring, so a nice um, dark green on the top. Um, it has short wings, which some of the other bush crickets do as well, but these always do. And the the habitat's a, a giveaway as well, um, and they like bogs, strangely enough. Um, they've got quite a, a difficult to hear song, it's quite slow and low rhythmic chirping, um, which might be easier to hear with a bat detector. So I'll let this guy go, so you can get back to finding a mate. And yeah, they're very well camouflaged, so as soon as you let them go, he's disappeared. So this video shows a southern oak bush cricket, one of the two species of oak bush cricket we get in South Wales. Um, the other species, the oak bush cricket, is far the commoner and looks the same as this, but with long wings. Both species are bright green and um, aren't really mistakable for any other Orthoptera species. They both live up in trees and are nocturnal, so they're quite difficult to see. Also, they don't call, so um, it's difficult to track them down. But they do get attracted to light, so you might find them in your house or in your moth trap. They're both carnivorous, so they actually live on other insects. The southern oak in particular lives off the uh, horse chestnut leaf miner, so they're good to see around horse chestnut trees. And then the oak bush cricket. Um, is often found on oak, um, but can be found on other deciduous native trees such as hawthorn. Worth keeping an eye out, um, especially if you have a light trap.
here we have a speckled bush cricket. Um, quite an unusual shape, as you can see. It's not really mistakable for anything else. Um, this is a female. You can see the ovipositor sticking on the back. But the males are a similar shape, so quite rotund. Um, they don't have any wings. And they've got these lovely long antennae, which is common in all the bush crickets. That's how um, you can tell them from grasshoppers because of the length and structure of the antennae. Um, these ones, they are common, but they're quite difficult to find. Um, they like um, dense vegetation, brambles and so on. They are attracted to light, so you might find them around your house or maybe in a moth trap if you've got one. And the call is um, too high pitched for us to hear, but you can use a bat detector. I'll add a bit of um, footage of a, the call on a bat detector after this. But yeah, nice species. Keep an eye out for them. You might see them just sunbathing on nettles or bramble on a sunny day. This is an example of a speckled bush cricket call on a bat detector. So you might be able to hear it right on the top of the range when you're down at 15. If you go upwards... So that that call, speckled bush cricket, probably somewhere up in the tree, or very hidden in the undergrowth. This is a great green bush cricket, so by far the largest species of orthoptera in Wales, and indeed the UK. Um, it's very easy to identify because it's so much larger than any other species, it's unmistakable. Um, it likes coastal areas, uh, sand dunes, so there are a few records scattered all along the um, South Wales coastline, and um, particularly on the Gower and at Kenfig. It's got a very loud penetrating song which you can hear from a long distance away, so that can be the best way to find them. So yeah, a lovely species to see, quite friendly as you can see. <laughs> um, but if you're in the right sort of place, keep an eye out for this guy. So this is the call of the Great Green Bush Cricket. Apologies for the road noise, it's decided to set up home next to a road. Um, you should be able to hear it, it's very loud, it's our largest and loudest species. Um, but you can use a bat detector if it's a bit too high pitched. That's the great green bush cricket on a bat detector. 